buyers never had to use a certain agent. Sellers never had to use a certain agent. A certain agent. There's for sale by owners. There's always, um, and and commissions have always been negotiable. Um, the the whole crux of this thing is now that we, that uh, we as as agents, and once again my team and myself have always done this. Have, have said, hey, this is what the um, this is what the recommended amount is, or whatever. But you can always choose, you know, your amounts. Um, but again, the the big concern that at least most of the agents that I hear from, and even some of my team agents are, hey, uh, let's say if Chala uh, is going to buy a house and she's pre-approved for five hundred thousand dollars, but then the seller says no, we're not going to pay anything to them. So Chala ends up absorbing that commission. Then let's just make it easy math and say it's ten thousand right. dollars. Say she's going to pay ten thousand dollars for the buyer broker service. How much does that actually reduce her uh, pre-qualification? Like if that's what she's max qualified for and she has to pay $10,000 additional out of pocket up front, what is the matrix on what she's actually eligible to purchase at that point? That's right. the, that's sort of the bigger... Multi-headed process here, multi-headed snake, I should say. So the first thing that, in my opinion, um, when you stop and think about this for just a moment, uh, the benefit to the consumer of a buyer broker agreement is now you have a more committed agent on your team Absolutely. rather than someone who is loosey goosey, maybe part time and so on. So there's a big benefit yeah. to that. Working for you um, from the beach. 100%. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think a buyer broker agreement benefits the consumer that way. The second way that I think um, we can handle that part that what you're describing, mm -hmm. um, I think what will end up shaking out is, and we're already starting to see this right now, is buyers agent compensation has always been built into the sale price. Correct. And I think it's always going to stay that way. And it's, it's just going to be done in a right. different way, personally. But Since uh, the dawn of time. Right. So as an example, most buyers wouldn't want to come up with closing costs if they could roll it into the mortgage. Do we agree? Of course. Okay. So, so same with well, buyer that was, agent. That was going to be a follow-up follow question. Right. Yeah, yeah. But same with buyer agent compensation. Right. So in other words, when a listing agent is being difficult mm -hmm. or saying the seller's not willing to pay, well, then it just sounds like we need to figure out what the seller's net desire is. Correct. And and so that is what ends up happening. So as an example of that five hundred thousand dollar transaction, so then maybe the sale price is five ten. And, and and of course then maybe the seller would be more inclined to pay a commission. But but I, I have to tell you something in my opinion, mm -hmm. Andrew, and, and and I think it's important. Um, it's not necessarily what the seller is willing to pay the buyer agent. It's what the buyer agent is willing to accept to bring the buyer. Correct. No, so that, I, I agree that's with that. That's a mindset. No, 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 I agree with that. And, that. I think the audience should understand. Right. So, and I guess I, I put you on the spot on that because that's the direct question that I've got the most yeah. so far, right? When I'm sitting with people, they're like, well, what, what happens to my, and I'm like, well, you have to talk to your lender, right. which in m many cases is you anyways, right. or your team, you know? Right. Um, so, but we'll, 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 we'll swing around the back on that one. I'm going to bring it up again in a different way a little bit later, try to trick you. Um, but the, the reality is that uh, on, on that basis, so, and this is something that in, in any of my, uh, past customers um, will tell you that when I sit down with them, the explanation, my explanation on commissions has always been this. Um, there's two different ways you can look at it. You know, some people look at it as a, as a, oh, I have to pay this much commission that's coming out of my money, or you can look at it the way that I've always looked at it, which is my concern and my job as a realtor, if you're the seller, is to put the most money net in your pocket at the end of the sale. Typically, and not even typically, historically, and if you look at the statistics, paying a buyer agent fee, and, to, and especially once you get up in a multi, you know, multi-million dollar deals, if you're not paying 3%, I'm sorry, it's just not, there's a lot of agents that aren't showing your property. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, right. but that's the reality right. of it. Um, and then a lot of agents in that level will really work really hard to get a deal done at 3%, right? So right. If, if you're going to, if you're going to get 7% for paying three, then I think it makes sense, right. but it's a math concept that not everybody can get their head around. Um, and again, on the other side, on the buyer side, now the the question uh, has come up, you know, twice through to me. Um, one once their team agent, one to me, was that specific question. But the the at the end of the day, a buyer has a finite amount of money to spend, however it gets spent. Correct. Right. So that's always going to drive what they're going to ultimately pay for a home. Right. Right. I think that you know the semantics of it, uh, just bringing that to the forefront, and also taking away the ability to say, "Hey, look, we understand the value of offering three percent, or two and a half percent, or whatever, you know, over another, you know, another percentage." I think we've taken away the that part of the benefit to the seller. Um, anyways, I do tend to ramble at times, <laughs> in case you didn't notice. Um, 
so assume so we're so let's let's assume that we're we're going on an even playing field and that that upfront money if it comes out of the quote unquote buyer's pocket doesn't affect their their purchasing power what is the um largest change you think this is going to actually bring about if any to your profession to lending is there going to be uh, you know is fh is, is a uh, fannie mae and freddie mac going to look at it and go well we have to now maybe make a caveat for that sort of thing i know we've just gotten brand new forms this week that that have to do with buyer uh, seller credit for to cover buyer i mean it's right. you know because there is some sort of thing but i'm not sure is that something that's already happening or so the way lending looks at these changes uh, they've not changed their stance whatsoever okay. because they really do believe that the free market will just uh, determine what will take place there okay um i, I think we have this messy middle mm -hmm where it's not necessarily so clear as to what agents should be doing. But I think if we look eight to 12 months out, it's gonna be very clear and concise. Here's my buyer, here's our compensation. There's gonna be counter offering taking place to get to the seller's net mm -hmm. and or what they wanna sell for, and then they're gonna meet in the middle. Somewhere. And what the buyer's willing to pay. And it's yeah. gonna really same be as a, kind yeah. of that simple, I believe. Okay. So as far and as- Unless it's VA, because VA, that will, but that's a separate story. So, so, unless, uh, so getting back to lending, they've not mm -hmm. changed their parameters whatsoever. Uh, so example, FHA has always allowed up to 6%. For seller concessions, they still allow six percent today. Right, and that's um, and, and and compensations above and beyond that. Okay, yeah, right, and that, that would so compensation outside of uh, lending compensation. Lending, or, or, I'm, lending, sorry, lending. I'm sorry, realtor compensation. Realtor compensation yeah. okay, outside. Okay, that's what I was saying. We'll make sure we're straight on that. Um, now VA though, VA did have to to change their rules. They had to relax their rule um, as far as what the uh, buyer can and cannot pay uh, because of this. I know there's a lot of controversy around that. Um, can you explain from your perspective exactly what that changes? Because you know, I mean, I know what I've heard from you know other lenders, right. but as a veteran, um, thank you for your service. Thank you, but I I feel like this whole thing kind of disenfranchised veterans a little bit on this particular subject. Yeah, I mean, VA was in a tricky spot, right? So what do you do? How do you satisfy this? Right. I mean, you can't take away the right for a veteran to buy a home. Right. Um, I think, again, this is all very short-lived. I think the shelf life to this is extraordinarily short-lived. Even on the VA mandate? Um, I, like I, think, I think across the board. Okay. I think what is happening here is you've got this middle ground mm -hmm. where it's kind of the wild, wild west happening, mm -hmm. um, but it'll end up shaking itself out to where a listing agent's gonna list a property. Mm -hmm. They're going to present to a seller what their share is going to be. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna put it to the open market. And the open market is going to bring an offer with a desired compensation and the seller's gonna make a decision. Right. And that's like 2.0 of this, in my opinion. Okay. And so if you think about that for a moment, let, let, and let's do it, be honest. We are really teetering, if not already, into a buyer's market. Oh, it's a buyer. Well, in my, in my opinion, it's a buyer's market here in that's right. Palm Beach County right that's now. That's right. I mean, that's right. Definitely. So um, the buyer has the value today. Yeah. And that's and that makes it very different, right? Because it's, you, right. Know, the, the lot, and, you know, and that's that's also one of the difficulties of uh, from a professional standpoint of being a realtor right now is that everybody kind of remembers the halcyon days of you know COVID right. Right. when you just put it up and fifteen million offers came. Well, that that world is gone, unfortunately. Right. And and explaining that and, and and being able to explain it in a way that makes sense with actual statistics and facts right. is 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 a thing that's you know very difficult for a lot of people. Fortunately, we've been able to to you know so far haven't had any issues with that. Um, so, but I, you know, again, to me, it's my mindset and what I've always tried to convey to my customers, especially on the seller side has always been, if you take commission out of the equation, which you're not ever going to take it out, but if you really look at what's most important, is it most important to put the most dollars in your pocket at the end of the day, or go around to your friends at the bar and go, hey, I only paid, you know, whatever percent in commission, because in the end of the day, we want to get you the most money in your pocket, right? right. And as a as a professional realtor who, who, I mean, I have a team, this is a career for me, I'm not a one-off, you know, a lot of realtors do one or two deals a year, but this is my, you know, my, my professional, my career has been for a long time. My value proposition is that I consistently sell people's properties for higher dollars than you know other agents or you know that they, they, they put more in their pocket right, right? They, they net more they net more right, right. That, and that's again that you know so i don't even like the idea of calling it all you know the cost of well it's not the cost of the sale it's part of the sale and look there's you know there's going to be we could all do this for free, right? You would do it for free, wouldn't you? <laughs> right? Yeah, not me. But the, I mean, the bottom line is that it's like any business, right? 
Now, there's always going to be a cost of doing that kind of business. I, I personally, again, feel like the transactional model that we had, and we used to lead on the forefront of, hey, this is what they're offering. Right. You know, this is what they're offering because we knew that was going to bring them, you know. So I think that's going to be one of the toughest things for people like myself. I mean, we, you know, we're figuring it out, but now it's a different world on that as well. Right. So that's why I'm kind of ambiguous about whether this is a good thing or not. Um, I know that the attorneys made out pretty good. 30, they, they, they made out pretty 30, well. Thirty-three percent commission yeah, on four billion, and then not and then they want another hundred and four million dollars in expenses. Yeah, yeah, not a bad payday. Yeah, not a bad payday for. Uh, Jeez. Hey guys, thank you for tuning into Living in South Florida Does Not Suck. Please do subscribe with the notification bell on. If you liked today's guest, you can also get more information about them right here. Like magic, it will appear. Uh, anyways, we love having you here. We love having your friends here. Shout it out from the rooftops. Like us on Facebook. Share it with your friends. We'll see you soon here in beautiful, sunny South Florida.